Welcome to the Research Works podcast, brought to you in association with the Healthy Strides Foundation. Your hosts are Dr. Dana Poole and Dr. Ashley Thornton. And we're here at the Oz ACPDM conference in Cairns, Australia, to interview world leading researchers, clinicians, and people with lived experience to support your practice in being more evidence based. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined at Oz ACPDM by Corin Walmsley, who is the research coordinator and an ocup- occupational therapist at Healthy Strides Foundation. Hello, welcome, hey. Corin. Hey. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Now it is during lunchtime. Yes, it is loud. We've got the team it to is. grab us some food, yeah. so we don't starve. But we're watching. It looks pretty good. It's it a does. Good spread. It's been a yeah, great spread and a yeah. busy day so far. Yeah, really busy, busy day. Um, but you know, we're here. We're chatting about the paper that you'll be presenting. Yeah. Um, uh, let's look at the title of it. It's pretty cool. It's called The Power of One. Mm-hmm. Let's yep. unpack that because I think most people are probably thinking about the movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. Inspirational movie. Yeah, yeah. Bryce Courtney. Yeah. Um, called The Power of One. Yes. <laughs> if you're wondering. <laughs> um, but I think this is this work, obviously a lot of us have had involvement within it, so I'm not yeah. going to talk as if I have no idea what it is, yeah. Yeah. which seems a bit weird. But it's a really uh, innovative kind of study design. Yeah. Can yeah. you describe to us... What is the power of one? Yeah, so the the power of one is all about understanding when kids with neurodisabilities start to achieve their goals. A lot of the research that's done at the moment is kind of grouped, so all the kids are grouped together. You can't see that individual change. And the uniqueness of the power of one is really looking at how each individual responds Uh um, and when they achieve their goals. So we're using a single-case experimental design and Mm -hmm. tracking target behaviours over the time of intervention um, to really have that individualised approach yeah beautiful I love summary. that yeah oh, and Corin can you for those without all of the context of the power of one which I feel like we have to, yeah. to a certain extent um how this idea or this yeah this evolution of this study design came about yeah well look at the moment there's a lot of talk about opportunity cost mm-hmm. and that's you know wanting kids to be kids and not spending yeah. all of their time in therapy and we in clinic we get a lot of kids who are going back to back therapy they're coming in they're going elsewhere they're coming back in it's yeah. really hard to see what goal attainment is looking like for these kids so yeah. this really um, is unique in that and that looking at how individual kids will achieve their goals mm. um, yeah based, based on that yeah. yeah and I feel like that is a real priority for families yeah. as well to make sure yeah. that they're making the most of the time that they're spending in therapy yeah. but they're not spending any more time than they need to in therapy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We, we want kids to do the minimum amount of therapy to achieve their goals. We don't yeah. want them spending endless hours doing therapy for just the sake of doing therapy. Yeah. We want them to do the therapy when they see us and yeah. be able to generalise that into a wider environment. Mm, and that's yeah. really what it's all about. That's why we do what we do. Yeah. yeah. We talk about that a lot, right? Like we do. don't do therapy to get good at therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. Dani can stand on one leg. Yeah. Tick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's talk about the methodology here because you have embedded a single case experimental design yeah. to track changes. So, yeah. you know, look at that target behavior. But, and I th- as that explains the power of one, looking at each individual child. But how is it that you are able to look at the overall, you know, dosage? Like, how, does, how do those two connect? What mm. sort of platform are you looking at there or kind of methodology I guess? Yeah so we're using a learning healthcare system Mm -hmm. and the learning healthcare system will input all of that data and then we're really able to use that as a predictive tool and it allows knowledge to be really generalised translated really quickly into clinical practice using that learning healthcare system Yeah. Yeah. and we've been talking a lot lately don't you reckon about just different kind of study designs yes we know the power of RCTs 100% you want to compare you want to reduce bias you do a randomized controlled trial Um, but when you want to look at how things are actually implemented into clinical practice a learning healthcare system allows you to track outcomes from real healthcare Mm. to inform future healthcare yeah but it's just another methodology, isn't it? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and the rigor is there. Mm. And yeah, the, the data is really powerful. Can you talk to us mm. about the data that 
were collected as part of this study. And yeah. 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 So we are, we, when kids come to see us, we sit down with the families and we determine their goals. And based on those goals, we then set target behaviours. So this is on a 10 point scale. And we're tracking that really objectively and incrementally mm-hmm. um, throughout their program and evaluate it each time they come and see us so that we can really track that change on an individual level. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's part of that part of it. Yeah. And so the the paper that you're presenting here at the conference, yeah. how many children, how many data points do you have as part of yeah, that? Yeah, so in total there's 905 target behaviours. Wow. So that's, that's a lot of data, um, but it's continually growing each and every day. We're yeah. continually putting that data in there um, to get the outputs. Yeah. And, yeah, and the beauty of the learning healthcare system model is that there's potential for the goalpost to shift slightly I guess like if you're looking at a target behavior yeah you know that as more data comes yeah. online yeah. what you're looking for in terms of a dosage might change right mm. yeah exactly exactly and the more data we have in there the more accurate we're likely to be as well so yeah continually putting that in um, to improve that accuracy yeah. yeah and I see in the abstract here Again, sorry, I'm talking like I don't know, but we we did machine learning. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and um, I guess the value of machine learning is probably worthwhile talking about because we're, we're all very familiar with statistical analyses yep. yeah. to analyze our data. It usually comes in, you look at it sort of retrospectively to analyze the outcomes. Um, and then there's value now of looking at what, a, what machine learning might do. Do you want yeah. to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so machine learning is unique in that. Yeah. Um, and it just adds another perspective. Mm. Um, so it's super Supervised machine learning um, that we can use to be a predictive tool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The benefits of that is that we can continually run those analyses through that machine learning um, interface as yeah. opposed to more um, statistical analysis where we're having to get a chunk of data, we get that data, then it goes back to a statistician. So it's just another perspective really and we're always mm. using that statistical analysis as well to guide the machine learning as yeah. well so that adds it just adds another layer to what we're able to provide to families yeah yeah i love that it's really cool do you want to talk a little bit about the outcomes then what, yeah. what have you found so far in your cohort that you've looked at yeah yeah <laughs> well there's definitely a lot of the kids that we see we we're looking at their co-occurring impairments yeah. and how that might impact goal attainment And so what we're seeing at the moment is that children with different um, co-occurring impairments may take longer to achieve their goal. Yeah. Yeah. What Um, kind of co-occurring impairments are you talking about here? What co-occurring impairments? Yeah, yeah. Um, Looking at their motor disorder, so spasticity, hypotonia, dystonia, looking at whether they have a seizure disorder, Mm -hmm. looking at visual and hearing impairments, whether they have a PEG. So looking at all those uh, co-occurring impairments, Mm -hmm. but really kind of honing in on ones that are impacting goal attainment. Right. Yep. And so the ones at the moment that are kind of really standing out to us, hypotonia, which makes sense, right? Yeah. Clearly, the kids yeah. who we see with low tone, it's taking them longer to respond to intervention and yep. therefore achieve goal attainment. And the other one as well is rare diseases at the mm, moment. Yeah. A lot mm. of these kids are taking a little bit longer to achieve their goals. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And do you think that's due to the, the layers of complexity that are... Added yeah, when definitely. we start to talk about more of these co-occurring... Yeah, it's a yeah. combination of the co-occurring impairments and the, the complexity of, of those that influence, mm. yeah, that goal yeah. attainment for yeah. these kids. Is there anything that has surprised you in the results so far or is it... I think what we're seeing out of the results is kind of what we see clinically, yeah. but it's kind of re... re um, reassuring what we're seeing yes. um, on that level yeah yeah, yeah. Is, which is really nice as well because yeah. you don't want to just be subjective in your what you're seeing and what you're relaying it's yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. actually confirming what we're seeing yeah it gives yeah. you confidence in those in your ability to reason clinically and you know yeah know intuitively where children are at within yeah. your program yes yeah, yeah you've yeah. actually got the data to back it up now yeah yeah exactly and that's so important isn't it like yeah. that objectivity to kind of go all right so if we have a child that presents in this kind of way with spasticity or hypotonia they're this gmscs level this is their goal let's figure out how long it might take them to achieve their goal if they're receiving like evidence-based interventions yes. that's a really important point i think yeah. that we haven't touched no. on we're talking about green light yeah. interventions yeah here. Yes. Like, this yes. is, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're applying what the literature is saying we should be applying, but the missing link that we don't know is how long does it take for them to then yeah. achieve their goal. Yeah. 
at least now we're not only just talking about when they achieve their goal, we're looking at different kind of diagnostic groups. Because yes. again, trials often are, you know, cerebral palsy only or in a rare disease, like very difficult to do a trial. Yeah. It's any more than a handful of people at yeah. one yeah. time. And that's the beauty of the single case experimental design, right? Yes. Like it's capturing the kids that aren't necessarily included in larger research studies as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you're more complex kids, your GMFCS fours and fives yeah. equivalent and your rare disease as well. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I'm going to articulate this very well, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> in an RCT, you have a very fixed dosage, right? So families who are part of an RCT know that their child is going to get X number of sessions yeah. and no matter where they're at, at mm. the end, well, you know, for the most part, no matter where they're at, yep. at the end of the RCT, that intervention finishes and whatever the outcome is, the outcome is. I feel like with the power of one and, and what you're building with this learning healthcare system, it's a, a really nice tool to kind of help guide parents' expectations yeah. Yeah. within therapy. And, yeah. okay, if that's if that's your child's goal or if that's your goal as a family, then yeah. that's what this is going to look like. More than likely, that's yeah. what yeah. this journey will look like for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's really powerful. You articulate that perfectly. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> and it's a nice way that we can sit down with parents as well and have those realistic conversations mm. Yeah, um, to set realistic goals mm. and also to have the expectations of when they may start to um, yeah, see those improvements yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. And the fact that you're tracking them so regularly means that if things change yeah. and the dosage needs to change, yeah. you can have that conversation early rather than getting exactly. to the end of it and saying, oh, actually, yeah. yeah. we need to do more or, we, yeah. you know, things need to change. That's yeah. a really good point because there's just as much of a problem of being underdosed. So you've, yeah. you've already spent, say, let's just say you've already spent 15 hours and you're just about to achieve your goal but we're stopping <laughs> yeah um, but if they did an extra three hours they might achieve their goal and make meaningful change outside of the therapy setting that's great to know because if you don't do that then you've wasted essentially 15 hours yeah. Yeah. but then if you throw everything at it and you give them 30 40 50 hours but they actually achieved it back at <laughs> hour yeah, 18 they're doing all this therapy that they don't necessarily need to be yeah. doing and they yeah. can be outside yeah and with their friends family mm, yeah and, or focusing yeah. on a different goal. Or, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When yeah. you start moving on to the next goal, you yeah. need to keep working on this. Have yeah. we achieved it yet? Yeah. 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 So where are you hoping to do with all of this information? It's a, it's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one. Look, we have, um, you know, great um, ambitions for the power of one and we'd love for this to go on a larger scale mm -hmm. for a learning healthcare system and have other sites potentially input into that data, which would be really helpful from a, yeah. a wider perspective. Yep. Um, the overall health context. Over, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and not only is this, you know, able to help us identify when kids are achieving their goals, but also potentially allowing families to know how much they have to allocate to funding mm. and, and plan ahead for their future. Yeah. Um, so from an NDIS perspective, that, mm. that's huge. Yeah. Just the cost analysis of it all. Yeah. Yes. Healthcare costs, balancing it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, sounds like it's going to keep you busy for some time, Corin. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming to chat with us yeah, today about it. You. It's really exciting. It and um, yeah, we look forward to hearing more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on again. <laughs> Aww, thanks for coming. Yeah. Well, to all of our listeners, I hope you really enjoyed that. Really interesting and exciting work happening. Yeah. But um, that seems to be the theme across this entire conference, yeah. isn't it? It's it great. Really Reimagining. Really, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk to you all again very, very soon. Again. Again. <laughs> we'll talk to you all again very soon. Um, so stay tuned for more. Bye. Bye. Bye.